in the last episode of Kay Nicole After Dark. So, thank you for joining Kay Nicole After Dark. So, let me put on my watch and we'll get started. Uh, I'm running a little behind today. I don't know what is going on with me, but I had a wardrobe malfunction because my nipples were super hard. Honest to truth, like I was like the bra would not stay on. So I had to get a, I had to put on a bra now that like would fully embrace so that a uh, nipple wouldn't pop out because they're like super hard right now. It's like crazy. Anyway, um, I know, overshare, right? But whatever. Anyway, um, the first part of our conversation tonight was going to be, so I have my notes, so I make sure that everything is wonderful, you know? Um, so recently, you know, I'm always hearing about, or we go through different things in life. We also hear about other people going through different things in life. And... We always hear, we hear opposites attract, or you should get some, um, have someone with similar values. Hi. Good evening, good evening. Happy hump day. Happy hump day to everyone here. So, I ask you, can a relationship build, be built on a foundation of one similarity? I ask that because in the modeling world, Often people often get into relationships based on model and photographer, right? Having a muse, having someone to constantly shoot. And they build a relationship around that. And I know that's not usual, but sometimes people build relationships based off of the office or celebrities basing it off, um, well, not celebrities, but actors in particular, basing it on them doing a movie. And I ask you, what do you think? Is that similarity that you have enough to have a relationship upon? I'll wait for anybody to respond. And if not, we'll continue. Okay. So. I have seen my, well, my, my, Myself actually has started a relationship based off of like one similarity, which was like I stated, modeling. I dated a fellow model, um, thinking that you know we would have, and I mean I saw his family too and everything, and thought that maybe we would be able to build something off of having, um, wanting you know a two-family household. Um, certain things, but mainly starting off of us modeling and us building off of that. Shallow, yes, but also convenient and, you know, you're, you're focused on work at that time. So you're about with a business. So you do what is most mindful of the business. And so if you're dating somebody, you want them to be in the business too. It just makes life easier, you know? Makes things life a lot, a lot easier. And those that are not here... Remember that it is going to be on my YouTube channel, so definitely check out my YouTube for past uh, Kane Nicole After Dark episodes. Like, subscribe. Um, I'll be taking moments to let you know that um, I also have my hair oil is out. Ugh. Make sure that you get yours. It is all natural, homemade, helps your hair grow well. Like, definitely check it out. If you don't want to get this full bottle, you can give it a sample bottle, and it's uh, you can purchase it on Etsy. Okay? So, in doing my research, right, because um, I'm a marriage, I, my background is psychology, marriage, and family therapy, but I also wanted to give some facts and some information um, that I had um, drawn up, because we're often told in many scenarios that opposites attract and you know you can build in even in movies and stuff like that we see people building um building relationships off of one similarity and so we oftentimes i think people think that that's possible um to do that and we often do do it right so 
I was asking you all, you know, what do you think if the if that can be if you can build a relationship off of one similarity? And the 202 kid says, obviously, the most similarities, the higher the chance of a lasting relationship. Trying to build on just one similarity is hard, but not impossible. Most similarities must be established. Definitely. I definitely agree with you. So it was found on um, by Julie of New Research that there's six personal traits that people look for. Honesty and humility, which is being truthful. Humility is... Um, Believing that we are all um, equal, no one's above us or below us. Um, emotionality, being able to share your emotions. Extroversion, whether you're introvert, extrovert. Uh, agreeableness, whether you're able to say, you know, um, go with the flow. Uh, conscientiousness, um, being understanding and courteous to someone else. And openness to new um, to other experiences, being able to have have growth and say hmm, I would like to try this basically um, the 202 kid says if more similarities are never found or created in the relationship is doomed yeah I, I mean I agree with you I mean of course um, I'm sure most of us would uh, know <laughs> that are grown obviously know that having a shared value shared backgrounds is actually the best way um, that your relationship is going to last and I think that a lot of the times that we're disillusioned um, by what we see around us, that relationships can be built on one thing. Um, and a lot of times people think that that's, we're talking about sex. And that could be anything that you're doing um, that takes up most of your time, right? If you're doing something that's going to be with somebody that's going to take most of your time, that is most likely who you're going to be around. And that's going to affect who you date. So... Um, you got to be aware of that, and if they don't fit the shared values, fit the shared background, then the likelihood of that relationship lasting, um, the the chances of it lasting for a while is um, is not that high, is not the greatest. <clears throat> so, um, along with the six personal traits, I found to include personal values and hobbies and interests. Like I said, um, Julie of New Research said the six personal traits are honesty, humility, emotionality, extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and openness to experience. Okay. So what I also found in my research is that um, also, you know how we're always saying, or a lot of people saying that are in toxic relationships, that person is crazy, that person is crazy. Well, they also found that neuroticism, which is uh, the tendency to have negative feelings, um, has a low potential, um, has a low rate of, uh, of success in a relationship. So people that have mental health concerns definitely have that, ch um, have that checked out because it definitely can affect your relationships. You know, and the strength and the um, longevity of them. Okay, so um, the next part of Canicle After Dark that I wanted to talk about um, was that taboo of straight men and anal sex. Now. I know this might not be a uh, super taboo in the Caucasian household, but as I have stated in my past um, scary dates for, for Halloween, that I had gone on a date with a guy that had wanted his salad tossed. And that blew my mind, especially for that time in life, like, People aren't out here like they are now. Um, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Canicle After Dark. Welcome for coming. Um, quick announcements. Definitely do buy a badge. Um, support your girl. Other ways that you can support Canicle brand is buying a hair oil. Okay, it's organic. It's all natural. 
it comes in four different scents and it just helps your hair grow like just wonderfully and it helps with the shine and I'm just saying I'm testimony for it myself I've been using it for years to face my own you know alopecia attraction alopecia that I was going through so definitely get yourself a bottle shit is great help with all this coming back so definitely check it out um so this like I said the first part that we talked about is similarities can you build a relationship on one similarity and we have basically talked about how there's six different personality traits that people look for but definitely the importance is having shared values and background just to recap what we had covered um, previously and going into the basically the stigma or why is it offensive when um, straight men talking about with them um, anal anal play or anal sex and when I looked it up because I'm not gonna lie the 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 gentleman that I'm around they look at me like I'm crazy whenever I bring up anything that has to do with their they're behind they're like you're bugging you're crazy like I'm not even gonna talk to you about that that you bugging and so I had to do my own research on it and I wish that someone would come and you know uh, would like to you know be a part of the the conversation and discuss on this um, as a man and how they feel about a woman um, sharing this but what was brought to my attention since I don't have any gentleman that would talk to me um, straightforward about this is that straight men do not want to talk about anal sex because of or initiate it because of the stigma right of being gay um, right if they enjoy it when if they um, enjoy um, seeing it, they enjoy doing it, if they in anything about it, um, then they're potentially gay or bisexual. Um, and because of the, you know, the society that we live in, that that was just, you know, that you'd just be considered gay and that would be it. So, um, it also had that the misinformation and the other stigmas about it is another reason why straight men are uncomfortable are talking about anal sex. Now we do know that there are some, there are men celebrities that have came out and talked about anal sex. Um, one of them is Kanye. Um, another one, Drake. Uh, who else did I find? Fifty Cent. You know, but again, there were there's levels to it. You know, whether it be rimming, um, penetration whether with a finger or whether with a you know strap on or a device or something like that I mean of course there's levels to it but um, for I believe black men it's more of a taboo than for maybe other races um, but I find that what the, the what I read about it um, basically stated that for straight men that it is pleasurable for them and that um that um pleasuring the prostates um can potentially increase um semen production and might even prevent cancer so it's like there's health benefits to doing that and how there's misnomers about how it's going to stretch out your anal cavity and how you know all these different um, <laughs> misinformation you know and I'm not saying that um, every man is going to be comfortable with doing it that's music says hell no I mean I get you I get you I mean like I said not every man is going to be interested in doing such but I'm what I'm saying is is that Myself, okay, right? It's like finding the person that's most comfortable with you. That's going to allow you to explore, right? 
Because they say as you, I mean, it's only, it's science, right? Or statistically, right? The older you get, the more kinky you become, right? So you start to explore and want to check out other things, right? And as you're with somebody, you know, you do missionary, you do um, doggy style, you do reverse cowgirl, you do regular cowgirl, you do, you know, all these different things and stuff like that, that is only, um, there's only more curiosity, right? And, you know, I think that there's always been, you know, I, I understand that there is both a male and female energy in all of us. And I think that what from what I was reading, that it just was stating that men that are not comfortable with anal play are some straight, are that there are straight men that are insecure and understand it as a way of inflicting pain. And I want to hear from you fellas, like, how do you feel about anal play if a female says that she wants to do anything that's around your behind, whether it be licking it, whether it be, you know, putting a finger, whether it be putting on a full um, strap on, how 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 are you mentally um, taking that information? Do you feel like that is going to make you gay if you go by that age old stigma? Or are you saying to yourself, you know what, this is for the person that I'm going to spend my life with. They want to explore this um this new you know sexual liberation let you know let's try this together so um i was when i like i said as i was doing the research it was telling me that hands on the knees are a great way for a light touch exploration and to not be able to have contact if you're like kind of shy about it um on your back which would allow the most um uh, penetration to your prostate and the more, most intimate recipient um, position and then of course uh, riding on top because that would allow um, uh, him to be able to control the length and the speed of which he was being penetrated but um, it was also saying another reason why straight men are not comfortable with anal sex and talking about it and everything is that they're not fully assuming um, their sexual identity and not comfortable with their homoeroticness and saying that we're all, um, you know, that basically saying that, like, sex is on a continuum. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, and that you're not really gay, you're not gay if you're having sex with this person or that person or whatever. I know people have a hard time understanding that information, and that is a conversation for another day. We're just going to focus on straight men and being comfortable talking and um, being a part of anal sex. And about how, you know, saying that maybe their partner won't see them um, as, as masculine. And I think that it all starts, again, with a conversation. You know, you have to have a conversation with your partner and find out where they are with it. I mean... And honestly, if it does come to the fact where they are looking at you funny, then that wasn't the person that you were supposed to be with. You know, they weren't going to respect the boundaries. They weren't going to treat you right. You know, something or something wasn't going to be proper, you know, with that situation. So you want someone that's going to respect your boundaries and treat you with respect um, and, you know, just love on you. So, um that was what the conclude with the information came to when it came to um straight men and that however right um it was interesting enough that a statistics that i found um and yes it's an old statistics but it's still the fact that that would even exist makes me understand that more men are undercover than they like to let on and it's something they need to come out and just like say. But anyway, um, this was this is this, 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 this wow. So it was a real stuttering moment just now. Uh, this was a statistic um, for the U.S. that uh, having anal sex with the opposite sex partner 
in 2006 and 2008 in the United States. And 44 men um, to 36 women stated they had anal sex with the opposite sex. Um, and that means that they were the they were the receiver of a woman giving them anal sex. Now, um, I find that interesting because that's a higher number than I would even expect. So that means, like, to me, that a lot of people are fronting. Clef Music says, facts, the first flight, she's flaming you. It's scary out here, not knowing who's on the low. It definitely is. And I feel like, you know, you need to have a conversation. You need to know what's going on and, you know, how that person is getting down. But I feel like a lot of people, and they get girlfriends to cover it up. Word up, word up. But that is something completely different. I'm talking about straight men that are into anal, that are into anal sex or curious about it, but they are offended or they don't want to talk about it um, because it's a taboo. And it's interesting to me because, like I said, I don't know if it is a cultural or racial um, difference. Um, but the statistic says that 44 out of 36 women um, stated that they were interested in having anal sex with the opposite sex. So, I mean, that tells you right there that there are men that are interested in having sex with a woman um, and seeing what that is about. And from what I've, what I've seen and what I've researched, they're saying that the the through the anus to the prostate gland is the best orgasm that a man could have. Like it's like having a multiple orgasm like a female. Uh, um Mary Kay says, oh, okay, love I can bleed. No, that's fine, girl. That's fine. Um, that's cool. Um, this is like Kane Cole after dark. You come in, you join, be a part of it, have a good time. So like I said, the first part of the episode, um, we discussed can you build a relationship off of one similarity and um, a few of us had agreed that you can build a relationship off of similar values and backgrounds but just having one um, the chances of it of its success is not high and again um, on the second topic of straight men and the taboo of talking about anal sex so the third um, topic that we're going to discuss tonight on um, K Nicole After Dark is who gives too much in a relationship. Um, when I originally uh, did the promo for this, I came from the. I don't even know what you would say, like the the one-minded thinking, you know, of uh, who puts in more in the relationship, a man or woman, instead of, you know, thinking outside of the box <laughs> and acknowledging, you know, where society is now. And I have to say my bad on that. Um, but I was thinking in more of really, truly, the context of how you know that you're putting more into a relationship um a lot of people say oh you know i'm putting a lot into the relationship because of this 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 and this or you know saying basically fighting with their partner and saying who puts more into the relationship and it's like how can you really tell you know um they say the someone said the, the 60 70 rule 70 80 rule or something like that i, don't, I can't remember I've been drinking now. We've been we've been turned up on this Wednesday. Um, yeah, so we're we're doing we're having fun right now. So, yeah. I think my Pinot Grigio. I liked it when I first drank it, but I don't know. It seems like when I crack the bottle. Shout out to Jim for this bottle. It's almost done. But I don't know. When he gave it to me, I enjoyed it. Now. I'm like, mm. and I, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe I put it because I, I put an ice cube in it. I don't know, but it tastes like icky now. I don't know. I'm going to have to drink it straight from the bottle again. 
Yeah, um, no relationship is 50-50. Of course. Of course, no relationship is 50-50. And uh, you can't expect it to be. But how do you know when you're putting too much into the relationship? You know? Um, and that they are basically stealing your energy to be it. And under all realness and all seriousness that they're just... Um, they're just vampires, you know, um, and they want all your time, they want all your energy, and they're not willing to give, you know, and it's like, is this relationship really worth it? Tune for Hire says, when she keeps complaining after everything that you felt you're doing right, that's how you, how you know? Okay. I mean that's what I mean that's one way, but I mean I guess they would have to be valid complaints, right? So I just want to take a quick break and say, if you are tuning in, welcome to K Nicole After Dark. Um, take a seat, grab your own glass because we're talking about relationships and things that people don't really want to talk about or feel uncomfortable to talk about. Um, I also want to say that I am promoting my crown and beard oil. So definitely go cop that. It is organic, natural, and has all fabulous ingredients. That'll get your hair nice and long and shine, baby. Like, my hair is gorgeous. Getting long like a scarf, baby. Long like a scarf. Can't touch this. Ha <laughs> ha. So, Clef Music says it all depends on the person and what you are okay with. True. True. But like I said, I came prepared. So, I have a commonality of things that it says that people can say in general about whether or not they're putting too much into a relationship. And how you feel is definitely important. Like, you can't turn off your feelings. If you feel a certain way, that's definitely a number one, you know. Um, even if another person gives you valid points and stuff like that. Because maybe you're not able to fill up their tank like that, you know. Some people can be a 50, you know. And you might be a 75. And it's like, they just can't get there. And you have to tell them, like, baby, baby, boo. You can't fill my glass up or... I can't fill yours up, you know, because I can only reach this much. And so I got to get, you know, and it sounds crazy, but then it's like, if I'm 50, if I can only give 50, then I need to find a 50% person so that our 50 and her 50 can equal to 100 because what we're doing is not going to add up and, and work for us. So thank you all for tuning in. So it was saying that uh, that you're putting too much into a relationship if the person is expecting you to your life to fit into their schedule so i mean i we all understand what that means but for example is uh, that you know you have a presentation that you have to do for work but they need you to pick them up from somewhere instead of them deciding on taking an uber or doing something like that they insist on you picking them up even though they know you have something else to do and not being considerate of their time but, you know, they always wanted to pick and choose what they need you to do. So, be mindful of that. And they drain you emotionally. Okay, and gotta watch out for that. The emotional vampires. Okay. That you have to regulate how they feel. Okay. They're, not, they're, they're never happy until you can make them happy. They're never sad. You make them sad. You make them happy. You make them angry. You make them all this and so you gotta watch out for them they're not to be played with so that's one way that they you feel emotionally drained you feel so heavy okay and that also feels like feeling exhausted you know and feeling almost desperate and holding on to the relationship you know because not only can it be that you're um that when you're putting in too much into the relationship that you also may be putting in too much into the relationship because you're scared to lose it. Okay. And that's what the, um, the feeling desperate might be. 
and grasping at straws because some people are scared to lose the relationship. You know, and that's why they're putting so much into it because they're like, oh, you, they might leave me. They might not find me interesting enough. They might not this or that. And really all you can do is be you. And if the person doesn't accept you for that, then they have to keep it. You have to keep it moving and they have to keep it moving because there's no point in y'all both being miserable, you know. Um, sidebar. Um, did everybody know that Eva Minnell... Um, that was on America's Next Top Model, I believe, while, like, a long time ago, um, is now getting divorced, you know? Um, Clef Music says, Krishan Rock and Blueface relationship. Yeah. Yeah, you don't, you're, like, constantly trying to figure out a way to keep them and this, that, and the third, um, and just desperate and, you know, putting their dirty laundry out there like their relationship is so toxic but eva just is it seems a lot of people divorcing nowadays one of the mary sisters is divorcing um i just found out that eva um morel is divorcing her husband but he said that he's gonna fight to get her back so i mean i don't know if that he was the one that got her to to um sign the divorce papers because usually the person's like, I'm going to fight is the one that usually did the dirt to try to win back. Because it was like, you shouldn't have to win it back, okay? You should continue to do so. But what we I've learned is that people get comfortable in relationships. And they don't realize that they need to continuously do the work. You need to continuously do the work. You can't be so comfortable and say that this person is just going to be happy with what I'm giving them right now. Because people evolve. People evolve every seven years. And you have to, again, be able to grow with that person. You know, and I think that's what it is. People are not learning how to adapt. We're becoming very lazy people. We're expecting instancy, you know, instantaneous results. And I think that we're expecting that from our partners too. Like I've changed, you need to get on the ball. And I think that people are not working towards having a rhythm, you know, because a marriage takes work, a relationship takes work. You know, and we're not all capable of doing the work. I know sometimes, like, when I've been in relationships, I wonder if I'm supposed to be in relationships. Because sometimes I'd be like, I just want to choke this person. You know, sometimes I'd be rather be better by myself because I wouldn't be so irritated. But, you know, you have to come to the decision if this person is good for you. If this person is going to um, help you at the end of the day be a better person. Right, so um, you can also feel like you're putting too much into the relationship um, if your lives are not integrated, okay? They don't want to ever be a part of what you're doing. They don't ever want to meet your friends, your parents, you know, and be a part of your life. They always want you to be a part of their life and see their life, but, you know, it's not a come together moment. Um, Clef Music says, I don't want to work, I want to chill. <laughs> I, I mean, we wish that relationships came that easy, don't we? Where we just meshed like that. And that's only in the movies. That's only in the movies, it does. Even after that, you know, the celebrities themselves, when they decide to get into a relationship and the camera's over and stuff like that, they'd be like, this is not all it's cracked up to be. And then they're broken up like three weeks after the film <laughs> has released. Like, or even before so, the, the film has been released and they are separated. So, yeah, you can't, you can't even trust that. So, you can't chill. You have to, you have to put in the work into relationships, you know. Um, that's where you get to see the fruit of your labor, right? But you reap what you sow. So, if you continue to till it, you continue to build, you know, and, and, and create and grow then it should be a fruitful harvest. If not, you don't do that, then your har there won't be a harvest. It will be bare. Everything will be barren. So, um, I believe like everything in life that is worth having is worth working for. So, gotta understand that. So, another thing is when you're working hard in these relationships, right? And you tell that person, you know, I feel like 
I've been putting a lot into this. I feel like, like I say, like I'm always washing the drawers. I'm always cooking, and I would really appreciate if you chipped in every once in a while and did such and such and such. And they're like, "Oh my goodness, don't you know how tired I can get? I get so tired." Or, "Oh my goodness." You know my boss is writing me at work. You know I have this presentation. You're gonna you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that, and it's like if they can't take any responsibility or at least not be defensive about it and, and actually reflect on it and take it in, then that's also something that you have that's a red flag. That's something that you need to look for. And you might be putting in too much work into that relationship because if you can't bring it to them for them to even acknowledge it, then there there's a little bit of a problem there. Just a little bit of a problem there. So something that you definitely want to watch out for. Um, so basically, the goal that you of being in a relationship is to provide the same level of care for each other's well-being to be able to nurture one another okay so how do we do that right how do we be able to do that the easiest way to do that is communication <laughs> so that's what you say you ask your person what is their love language how do you want this to be done how do you want that to be done because you doing more is just going to exhaust yourself rather than you want to ask that's the best way to resolve anything is to ask questions the last question is too stupid in trying to build your relationship so ask them you know what is going to make them happy what is going to um what is going to nurture the relationship because there's nothing worse them being in a relationship with the, both of y'all looking at each other and don't know what to say, you know, and aren't able to fulfill each other's needs. So, um, also what I found that this is what they had to say. I don't necessarily agree um, with this being the reason that you'll know that you're giving too much in a relationship is that they don't care about your personal life. I think that... Um, there's levels to caring. I don't think that they're just not going to give... I mean, there are... If you're, if you're dating somebody that completely does not give a shit about your personal life, then you definitely don't want to date them anyway. But I am going gonna go to the impression that they're not paying attention to the facts of the thing. Like, if you've repeatedly told them about a co-worker that is harassing you and you're telling them this story and they're like, Who? You know, it's it's those things of like, okay, are you actively listening to me? Are you actively paying attention? And I think those are the things that you need to know for that, you know, you're putting too much into the relationship because it's like, okay, um, am I not being heard? And everybody should be heard and acknowledged and seen in the, the relationship um, and whatever relationship you're in, you know, um, should be able to be, you know, feel like you're being seen and being heard. So, um, the best way to, yeah, is to not feel like you're putting so much into a relationship is to discuss it with that person and really have a heart to heart with them. And like I said, if they are defensive, if you feel like after you've had that conversation, you're completely drained and exhausted and you are like, I can't deal with this anymore, then most likely it's your time to walk away. And that relationship is toxic. Um, and... A lot of the times, again, we have to walk away from toxic people, but we also have to look in ourselves and see what is attracting that toxic energy. Because a lot of the times we are, we attract what we put out and we have to understand and acknowledge what are we putting out that the universe is, is attracting and bringing this person to us. So, gotta, gotta acknowledge that, gotta do the work, gotta do, like I said, you gotta constantly do the homework and like add, analyze and just, you know, um be mindful and be present you know because when you're present in the time then you can reflect and be like what happened in that moment you know i don't think people can do that if they're not present and they're thinking about other stuff um you can reflect um better 
when you're present in the moment. So um, those are the topics for this evening. Uh, thank you for joining. Again, I wanted to really quickly go over everything and sum it up. Um, the Canicle at the Dark tonight was um, great to have you all a part of it. We started off talking about the similarities in a relationship. Can a relationship survive or be sustained on a single similarity? And we have came to the conclusion that no, it cannot. It is best if it can survive on a similar background and similar values. Um, the longevity is usually not based on uh, personality, but um, there are certain traits, which um, if you do want to watch uh, what those traits are, you can watch this again on YouTube when it is posted. Um, the second part of the conversation was uh, straight men and the taboo of anal sex. How was how do you feel about that? And what is so it gave me a bunch of um, reasons why um, men straight men would feel uncomfortable uh, with anal sex, but again, with the statistics showing that more men are interested in anal sex than women and would like to try it. So, I mean, that just shows you the disparity of it um, and the cognitive, the, you know, the dissonance, you know, the kind of dissonance between, you know, wanting to do something and actually doing it because um, it's there. They're, they're obviously, people are obviously, well, men, straight men are obviously interested in doing it. And because of the taboo and the fear and the heteronormative society that we live in, they don't want to acknowledge that. And um, like I've said, we both, and it's scientifically proven that we both have male and female um, energy inside of us. And it's about just being able to acknowledge that energy. Um, you know, you have to go to your therapist to, to figure that out, you know. Um, I'm just one and I'm, you know, not, uh, I can't, I can't do right now because my license is not here. So, yeah. But um, <laughs> outside of that, um, th that was the, and the third of the conversation was, um, so the third topic of the, of the night was um, knowing when you put too much into the relationship, where we did say that you can feel emotionally drained, um, you can feel desperate because you're giving so much because you're feeling that you don't want to lose the relationship, um, that you're constantly putting so much into it, um, that you're feeling exhausted, um, the person does not want to adjust their schedule, they want you to work around their schedule, um, and that they're not, they're not really concerned about what you're doing, it's about them. And um, we need a relationship where we're both cultivating each other's needs. Hey, good evening. Welcome to Kana Cole After Dark, um, where we talk about relationships and things that people don't really feel comfortable talking about. So, um, yes, again, um, those were a few of the things. So, again, thank you for tuning in. Um, I appreciate you all. For being here for Kane and Nicole After Dark, we will be here again every Wednesday at 10 p.m. If you didn't see the beginning, please go on to the YouTube, Kane and Nicole After Dark. Please like and subscribe um, so that you can catch us talking about relationships and hair care because I am the founder of AKYCS. Um, this is the Crown and Beard Oil, which is organic. It helps with um, hair growth, um, blood circulation, um, dandruff, and moisturization and shine. Like, this bad boy is, like, in a bottle. Like, I don't even, I can't even say because it's like, it's all that in a bag of chips. Like, they, like they used to say, like, this shit is the bomb. Um... It has Jamaican black castor oil in it. It has avocado oil in it. It has olive oil in it. Like, it's just a great... It is great. Like, this is the bottle. Um, all the ingredients in it. Use it three times a day. Um, well, three times a week. Um, you can use it as much as you want. I mean, I, I wouldn't use too much because then it would make your hair look like super oily. But it's a great product. Um, you just put a little bit... Hand, I like to. I'm heavy handed, I'm not gonna lie, and I like to rub it in my hands. 
like that. It's like this. I'm gonna rub it in there. Okay. I do like that. And then, yeah. And I keep my hair nice and healthy. Um it's and I do it like that because it just helps also stimulate the scalp by massaging it. You know. So and it maintains the shine and everything. Like my hair. Nice and healthy, um, no buildup, nothing bad. Ooh, everything's just like falling off now. Um, but no, um, no buildup, no nothing. Like the shit is like popping, and I, and it just adds, and it's like it's lightweight, um, no dandruff. Like, like I said, like no buildup. That's the most important thing. Like, there's no buildup. Um, Tune for Hire says, I've been using it for days and my beard looks amazing. Laugh out loud. Well, that's the way people are describing it. You are hilarious, Tune, but thank you. 60 days. Okay. Yes, definitely try my hair oil. Um, even if you don't want to get the large bottle, definitely get the, um, the one ounce bottle, uh, which is for $7. Um, seven or $6. I don't remember, but. It's one of those, and I am swear for that, you won't go to another oil like that is amazing, and it comes in four different scents. Um, I want to do this four different scents, um, and I can't say enough great things about it. Like honestly, like it's really good, and it's helped my hair, and I've helped it's helped people that have um, had hair loss. So, I mean, you know, I, I'm proud of it, and I know that. It's going to do wonders for your hair. So definitely check it out. Like I said, you don't have to get the big bottle. You can get the smaller bottle. And let's see how it works for you. I know you won't be disappointed. So check it out. Um, Clef Music says, and you twist my hair. We'll talk about that offline. <laughs> and like I'm now petting my hair and everything like that. Like, no, it's a really good oil. Um... I use it all the time and love it. So check it out for yourself. Um, I also have apparel as well. Um, if you want, uh, always keep your crown straight. Um, T-shirts, hoodies, and things of that nature. I have those products as well. But it all started, like I said, with the hair oil. So again, thank you all for tuning in to Kena Cole After Dark coming to you every Wednesday at 10 p.m. If you're not able to see the entire episode, please check it out on YouTube where the full episode will be up where you can like and subscribe. So thank you all. And yes, enjoy the rest of your hump day and enjoy the rest of the week. God bless. And of course, always keep your crown straight. Take care.